right into the making of. Uh, so we'll have a look at uh, our aid application. Uh, so on top of our SDK we have a toolkit and one of those tools is the aid or the uh, AI development environment. Now in the uh, development environment uh, we can have a look at the exact same demo and uh, just a nicer cleaner visualization of that same demo. So in here uh, what we're looking at um, is uh, our visualization and you can see that there's a character on the upper uh, level uh, that navigates around so that really is uh, in the SDK it wasn't so, some sort of uh, unreal trickery gets the destination uh, now if I go in and if I uh, delete the fence uh, sort of like what I was doing to, to blow up the fence um, you can see that the character will now jump down uh, now what's important to note is as they jump down they really are jumping down uh, knowing that they're landing somewhere safe Let's get out of there. Now we'll start up the uh, UE3 demo, uh, the uh, making of uh, this inside of uh, Unreal. So if we have a look at our demo inside of Unreal, uh, you'll see that uh, so basic artwork, uh, the same level that we've been playing. Now to create the same arena, uh, the uh, nav mesh inside this environment, all you need to do is select the BSP that I've just selected, stretch that out to create a uh, an area uh, where you want the AI to uh, path find. Um, so I'll just go in there and make that into a nav mesh. So if I right click on that in our tools, uh, I can turn that into a nav mesh. Then uh, I'll go up top here and I'll add that uh, to the character so the character can use the nav mesh to navigate around the environment. So add the nav mesh and that's good. Now if I play the, uh, the demo, you'll notice that uh, right away, I, I can play the demo and I don't have to hit generate paths. Uh, so, so what's important to note is the way that we've created AI implant inside of Unreal, uh, there, there are very few times when you'll actually have to be part of the build process. So it's very quick and intuitive uh, for you to be able to run the demo inside the, the game, uh, to iterate quickly, um, to be able to see what, what's happening. So let's see what's uh, going on in here. Uh, set that up. Now, as I spawn a character, I'll just pause them so that you can see our visualization. So now you can see that there's a red line that means that they're pathfinding toward me. Not terribly interesting at the moment because they're not actually pathfinding around anything. So let me go back in there and fix the problem that we had in the initial demo. So in the initial demo there was some sort of a, a box that the character got blocked on. Uh, so here what we're going to do is we're going to make that into an obstacle so that the character uh, is aware of it. So I'll make that into an obstacle and then uh, the character will be made aware of that by adding a rule in their brain. So here we'll go in and we'll add uh, an avoid uh, obstacle constraint. Now the character will be able to path find around that. So again, I didn't have to create any sort of path nodes or, or uh, you know, draw an explicit path around uh, the object in question. Um, I just tag the object and hit play. So very, very intuitive, uh, really easy for level designers to uh, quickly iterate and to make changes. Just let that load up. Now if I go in and I knock the object over and watch that as the character that I've spawned uh, moves toward me, I can see that they're actually pathfinding around the object now. Uh, now uh, you'll notice that the representation we have right now of the object is actually quite complex. Um, now, of course, I wouldn't have many objects like that in my scenario. What I can do inside the editor is I can simplify that uh, so that we can have hundreds of those things uh, without uh, any sort of a performance cost. Uh, so here I'll go in and I'll select the object and I'll just simplify it. So in the bottom left you can see that uh, when I simplify it, uh, now I have a, an extremely simple uh, representation of that object. Now, just a couple of other things. Uh, you know, where where are we inside uh, this uh, particular application? Uh, we have some visualization here at the bottom. Uh, we have uh, our AI implant brain explorer, and I think that's extremely important that you can expose only those parameters that you want to iterate on. Um, so level designers have the parameters they need, um, and that that really is some some nice uh, functionality. Uh, so as you can see here, certain parameters are exposed that you can change very quickly without being tied to the build system or to scripting. Um, and, and it's your choice. You can expose what you want. 
Uh, other places where we have some AI implant uh, functionality, so in Kismet, uh, Standard Actor Factory, uh, we have AI implant actions that are exposed to get or set any of our attributes. We have events as well. Uh, any of our events can be uh, set or, or gotten uh, from externally, or uh, we, we can set uh, Unreal events from, from our system also. And lastly, let's have a look at the UDE. So as a programmer, what you can do is you can add AI implant functionality to uh, aggressive AI. Uh, so you can get or set any of our attributes. Uh, as you can see here, I have a script uh, that, that's handy. Um, and what I did for the demo was I augmented uh, the uh, pawn class. Um, now, now really that means that everything that uh, Unreal is good at, uh, you get to keep and uh, you get to add environmental awareness and the character will, will be able to uh, deal with a dynamic environment. Uh, use uh, objects as weapons and, and so on and so forth. So that's about it for the demo. Please feel free to contact us for more information.